I definitely heard Mama say Mama Sa, Mama Kusa. I think that's yeah, what a lot of people say. I heard some sauce in there. Yes. What does he really say? You said what he said. I'm going to say it one more time. I'm not going to stop. I'm going to say it one more time. I'm not going to stop. I'm not guessing. That's not what he says. He been lying to us. I don't know who this is, right? Oh, oh. We 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 got a whole We got a whole audience. What's good, pedestrians, and welcome back to another episode of Word on the Street. I'm one of your hosts, Deja Peters. I'm another host, Cedric Joe. And I'm another host, Noah Abbott. And we have another special guest with us today. I'll let him introduce himself. Well, what's good, pedestrians? My name is Joshua Caleb Johnson. What's up? What's and basically, he like the Bobby Brown of the group. So <laughs> <he> left. <laughs> nah, that's not what happened. <laughs> no way. Suave and everything. Yeah, my name is Joshua. <laughs> I'm just being myself. Say, why your why your voice drop? Hey, I'm, this, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just being myself. I feel like that's how I always talk when I'm around people. Oh. Stuff like that, but when I'm at home, it's a little different. All like, right. He get on the game. Yeah, they on me. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Oh, I'm running. Oh, I'm running. Well, okay. <laughs> I feel like I ain't gonna lie though. I feel like with all dudes, it's like a natural thing to like. <laughs> like you know, you know, you know, no, no, but it's not just that. I feel like my natural voice is this, but when I get on the game, I feel like my voice goes up because I'm like. I didn't caught myself a couple times. I like, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, they on me. Somebody coming. Hey, how you doing? Bro? <laughs> I was just for the call. You know what? I guess, you know what? Really I guess that makes it. Well, okay. From what I understand, it's like, isn't it who you guys are comfortable around, your boys? And yeah, like, I, I feel like, around? I feel like, cause it's like my boys, so I ain't got to worry about nothing. But I feel like there's so many standards for like girls. So like, I don't change my voice, but I feel like I just like naturally just, maybe, maybe some testosterone yeah. kicking or some, just like <laughs> bass in there or something. What's good, baby? You know, you gotta, <laughs> oh. grip your hands a little bit. Oh my God. <laughs> um, okay. Well, Josh, can you? Tell us about what you do. Who, how, how, who, are, you? who are you? What do you do? Like, who are you, Josh? Who are you? <laughs> <laughs> Act like Narnwar. All right. Well, uh, my name is Joshua Kimball Johnson. Like you guys know, I am an actor. You guys probably best know me for my role uh, as Onion on The Good Lord Bird. And also, I played Willa Parker Jr. in Women of the Movement, Demi Till's Story. And I've been acting for around six, seven years or so. Mm-hmm. And I love it. I mean, everything about it is just amazing. Hey, six or seven years. How old are you now? I just turned 17 last week on Saturday. Okay, okay. Happy belated yeah. birthday in the comments. Just, appreciate what you a Gemini? Yeah. I'm a Gemini. Yeah. <coughs> okay. Don't, don't, don't. No, that was an accident. No, that wasn't even on purpose. That wasn't even on purpose. What do you mean by that? I was just like a little something. I thought you were up real quick. We all know Sagittarius is the best, right? Yeah. <laughs> Next question. <laughs> uh, Next topic. Nah. <laughs> okay, so for you all that don't know, um, we actually shot Josh's episode before. Um, had a couple tech good difficulties, so you know what I'm saying. Now we back, we reshooting it, and you know, glad to have them back on here. Cause glad you know, to have me personally, I'd be like, hey, man. I'm just, <laughs> I'm just saying, nah, but yeah, glad to have them back on the show. You know what I'm saying, yeah, talk to them a little yeah. bit. Yeah. Um, man, let's get back to the acting. So, you first started at so what age? I what? started, I'm gonna say around 10 years old, okay. maybe, maybe like just turning 11, but I'm gonna say 10. And it's 10. funny because the other night. I just I don't know if you all know, but Josh has a short film called <laughs> It's Just a Gun when he was, when he first really started acting oh, and man, we I just it. watched it like what was that like, couple days ago? It was like two, three days ago two, we all three on phone watching it. Yeah. And it was a good perform- it was a great performance. I'm yeah. not gonna lie. Great, great plot, great storyline. It was really good. I'm not gonna lie. It was <laughs> funny was... though, like just seeing him how young you were. Like, you gotta put that clip. Let me throw that clip up there. <laughs> the link, or, you know, you got to link the link. Oh, yeah. It's, 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 oh, it's, 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 it's still, it's, on, I mean, it's been out for a long time. But, I mean, I was like, get yeah, that gun. 
<laughs> I, I was like 10 years old, I think. I think I was just turning 11 at that time, actually. Mm-hmm. And I was like probably my first thing. And the crazy part about it, it was like one of those situations where you go for one role and then like they're like, you, you did good, but like, I want to see you do this role. Mm-hmm. And like, I got it like that and they booked me on the spot. Okay. Sounds and it was, I mean, I kind of kickstarted my love for acting in a way. That was my first thing I booked. Well, first theatrical thing I could say I booked. Mm-hmm. And I think I've loved it ever since. What role did you audition for before? I rolled, oh, I said I rolled. <laughs> I auditioned for the role of, what was my, my name was Gabe. What was my best friend's name? Was it? It was the other little boy. That yeah, you it, it was. It was my friend BJ. That okay, I know okay. now. It was his role. Okay. We both auditioned for like different roles. Mm-hmm. Like he auditioned for my role, and I auditioned for his role, and we ended up getting each other's role. That's like, BJ. Like, BJ Tanner. Yeah, BJ Tanner. Yeah. yeah, BJ gotta come on too soon. You know, we all. Yeah, I, I'll. Okay, that's my guy. BJ's actually he's over. In, he's in Texas right now. When yeah. it comes to California, for sure. He gonna come on for sure. So, Cause he should be more vocal. But nah, yeah, it's crazy. He started. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I feel like. Well, I know you started like five months. You started like what five? <laughs> five. I started around like nine. So we all kind of started. Well, y'all kind of started similar times. Mm-hmm. I mean, I was I was a lot younger than y'all, or a lot a little older when y'all started. But it's cool. It's cool. But regardless, what is your what is your best takeaway from a set that you've been on? Um, I think my best takeaway from a set that I've been on has to be listening. I feel like that's like the biggest thing when it comes to acting because every single scene you're in doesn't mean you're going to be talking. Like, for the most part, yeah. But, like, there's a lot of scenes where, like, the most powerful performance is when they just listen and react to everything that they're hearing and just kind of let the scene um, kind of resonate within them and just really be in that character. And I think listening is, like, the most important thing, and at least in my opinion, as an actor. And also that you're never, like, too smart to learn something else. I feel like you're going to do every single day. And so to limit yourself thinking like you know everything is just going to hinder you in the future. So I think, you know, just being a directable person who knows how to listen and is humble and like very grounded will take you very far. Have you ever had a moment though, because I know I have, of, of just, you know, you, you spoke about humble and stuff. Have you ever had that, I guess that cocky moment where you, you realize where kind of caught yourself oh yeah of course on the good lord bird i'm gonna say after my first or second month of filming when i was like really in my groove mm-hmm. i was i was feeling myself man number one on the call sheet mm-hmm. i was getting catered to and it felt great and i love the feeling but i was like not out of pocket but i was just like you know just can't, being too cocky i should mm-hmm. say mm-hmm. and so my mom she was like i guess i had been rude to her like on an accident or i was talking back and she snatched me up. She said, she said, boy, I will take us back to California right now if you don't start acting right. Mm-hmm. I was like, whoa. But I was like, all right, she's right. Like, this is not how I was raised. Let me just be myself, be the humble young man that she's raised. And, I mean, after that, we had no other problems. Damn. I feel like, I feel like it helped me in a way. She put me in check real fast. Check, I feel like it helped, though, because a lot of kids, like, their parents kind of let them run all over them, in a sense, yeah. when it comes to the acting industry, especially yeah. because... Wow. The kids are very, a lot of kids are very entitled. And, like, their parents are like, well, you make your own money or you're making a lot of money for the household in a way. Like, you can kind of do whatever you want. But I just don't feel like that's a good way to raise somebody because right. it kind of just makes them, like I said, entitled. And feel like they, you know, are, that people owe them everything in the world. So, I mean. We need to bring back weapons. <laughs> That good old old school good old fashion old discipline. Old school. <laughs> okay, okay, but y'all know they the never car. they didn't remove whoopings. So you just but, can't you, know. you can't use any objects. You gotta use like, huh? Wait, huh? like literally, I think I think it's a law. It's a law somewhere that you have to use. Like the only thing you can use to to like spank your child is an open hand. <laughs> That's not how I was raised. I mean, yeah, there ain't no hands <laughs> of you. <laughs> you know, a lot of people, you know, they got stories and stuff when they book when they book some these big these yeah. big things and stuff these big shows. You know, what was it like, you know, when you got the call? Where were you when you got the call that you, you just booked Onion, Good Lord Bird? What was you doing in that moment? Man, actually, they tricked me to thinking I didn't get it. So basically what happened was, it was, I think, three or four days before my birthday in 2019. I was about to graduate eighth grade. Okay. And I had been through so many testings and network calls and yeah. callbacks and all these different type of things. Yeah. And my mom, my mom had, like, picked me up from school one day. And I knew it was off because she had my iPad in her hand trying to record my, like my reaction to something. So I was like, what is she doing? But I was still like being kind of just immature, not immature, naive. Yeah. And I was just going with what she was saying. So my manager called me and her first words were, you ready to be a superstar? I was like, duh. 
I've been waiting for a long time. <laughs> yeah, like, I've been waiting, man. Like, what? And then she was like, you got the role. But the thing was, I thought I was getting picked up early from school to go to another uh, network testing. And so I was focused on, like, my lines and things. And she told me oh, I got yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. I went to Denny's yeah. parking lot. I ate, like, about four stacks of pancakes, Dang, mango yeah. smoothie. Dang, and I was, I, mean, I was ecstatic. Like, that was probably one of the best days of my life. And it was, like, a, an early birthday present in a way, I yeah. think. Because I literally was about to turn 14, like, four days later, I think. I'm not sure. But, man, I was super, I was ridiculously excited. Right. Yeah, that's yeah. great. That's great. For sure, for sure, for sure. Man, that's a, well, first of all, that's a, that's a really big deal to be, mm-hmm. like, 14, big deal, big, yeah. big deal. Why don't you let people know where they can find The Good Little Bird? Oh, The Good Little Bird is uh, on Hulu, and it's also on Showtime. Um, and, you know, for y'all international viewers, it is in every single language as well. So, okay, we got, got you. Everything. Everywhere. We got you. How about you work with, you know, Ethan Hawke. He's a great, profound actor. You know, he's great. Mm-hmm. And then um, the V Diggs, also, you know. What did you take away from them? Did you, did you get any knowledge from them, being on set with them? Yeah, did, what did you take away from that? I learned a lot. I always like to say that I feel personally that I learned more in that six months of, of filming um, The Good Little Bird than a lot of people learn in like 10 years at different acting like conservatories and different acting schools. I feel like that hands-on experience. Yeah. And also when you're younger, I feel like you kind of soak up more knowledge in a way. Like oh, yeah. I, my mom always says, younger kids are like sponges. So whatever you do yeah. around them, um, they kind of just soak it in and yeah. kind of replicate it like a monkey see do type of thing. Yeah. And one of the big things I already mentioned it was listening. That's what Ethan told me directly. He said, "Look, man, there's a lot of great actors, but if you don't know how to listen, um, it's not gonna you're not gonna get far." He said, "Be listen and be directable, and that's gonna take you a lot further. And also hard work, obviously, yeah. can take you a lot further than a lot of other people um, okay. in this industry. And also just do your research. You know, be dedicated. I feel like a lot of people like before they do roles and stuff, and even auditions." I do research for auditions, not just when I get a role. Yeah. I feel like I want to fully know that character. And if it's like a fictional character, then I have to make up my own research. You know yeah. what I mean? So just being, you know, dedicated to your craft mm-hmm. and just always knowing that you can improve on something, I think takes you a very long way. Man, he's dropping the gems. He's dropping the gems to me. I'm, I'm, I'm telling, telling you, you he's I'm dropping the gems. Get your pen and paper. Man, I got the gems. I'm also <laughs> dropping the gems. Now, uh, I want to get a little bit to like before acting. Because I know we play sports together, yeah. um, Pop Warner. But what was or what was that like or how was getting to acting? Was it something you just woke up and just wanted to do or was it like did you want to be in the NFL or like how was that? Man, when I was a kid, I think I wanted to do everything. I wanted to be a superhero, a firefighter, an astronaut, a plumber. I think I wanted to be a lot of things. A plumber. I mean, associates. I used to tell my mom I want to be a plumber and like run around the house like a little. Uh, what is that called? The plunger. Yeah, the plunger. Yeah. yeah them dreams. <laughs> I ain't, I ain't, I ain't, 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 ain't nothing wrong with plumbers, but this nah, is not, not for me. Nah, but nah, but nah, nah, nah when I was great. around, I'm gonna say like around eight or nine years old, I did really want to be a football player, like in the NFL. That was my dreams. Football was my first love. Mm-hmm. I fell in love with it ever since I was a kid. Um, yeah. But then, like acting was just something that kind of came natural in the sense of I always wanted to be the center of attention, like with all the family gatherings. I was always entertaining everybody, singing. So you're a narcissist, okay. A, a narcissist is crazy, no, no, no. <laughs> but I was always like entertaining everybody, and my mom was like, "Nah, I don't want you to act because my older brother acted, and she didn't, kind of didn't like the way that it ended with him, mm-hmm. like why he stopped acting." So she was like, "Nah, just be a kid. Like you can be an actor when you're older." But then I was on a football field one day when I was like ten years old, I'm gonna say, and the cast director came up to me after a football game and was like, "Look, we want you to do this commercial. Like, come do it." And I was like, "Mommy, you gotta like give me like a, almost like a, a a test a test trial, I guess. Uh, what is what is this called? A like trial. a trial. A, a trial, I guess you could say. Yeah, just like a trial. And if I did good, and I if I like her main thing was that I was gonna be dedicated and not complain because acting comes with a lot of sacrifices. Yeah. I wasn't able to go to a lot of birthday parties. Even today, I'm not able to go to a lot of the like regular parties that people go to. That's just not how it is." And so she wanted to make sure I was going to be dedicated to him. I mean, we're here now, so I think it worked. <laughs> I do. I do. Talked about the football. Who your team, man? Who your team? Uh, y'all know, man. San Francisco 49ers. Uh, oh, that's that's the truth. Who? 49ers. Who? No, you can't say that. You can't say that. Who? The 49ers. 
He's he gonna start talking about sorry Dallas Dallas Cowgirls. So I don't really hear it. Cowboys. Wow. Boys. I don't even. I don't even. We them boys. I'm not even behind the Cowboys. That was about to get up out of there. Yeah, yeah, Debo not getting up out of there. We don't get Debo no more. He carried them. He carried them. He carried them. You gonna say that? But Debo's gonna get the bag. He's still gonna be a Forty Nine er at the end of the day. Like Debo is not our only weapon. They need to pull that. Pause. I'm sorry. Y'all wouldn't ever beat us if y'all didn't have Debo. Who is that? Debo Samuels. Brandon, Brandon Ayuk, first of all, cooked the Cowboys, so you can't say nothing. But Debo yeah, Samuels. He was cooking tape on the whole game. Yeah, he was cooking him, he but Debo was cooking Debo was Debo was Debo was but, but back to what they just questioned. Yes, who is that? Debo Samuel is a wide receiver for the, the, um, the 49ers. Let me finish. I could just really explain it to you. No, you can't because he's, a, he's, he's a receiver that he's, he's he's a hater, so you can't I'm like him explain it to him. I'm not hating. I'm not hating. He just cares. Yeah, I'm not a fan. So basically, he's Debo going. Samuel is a wide receiver who also plays running back. He's like one of the most versatile, I think, players in the league right now. He carried a 49. So he's he's a very good football. player. Oh, he's amazing. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. For sure. That's like if you ask who the Cowboys were, they probably one of the most overrated teams in the NFL. Yeah. Every, 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 single year, every single year, every single year, that will take you to the man. This, this year's, year's our year. year. Every year, like, every say that about five years. times. That's yeah. the Cowboys. Yeah. You're saying that since 1996. Still got the same amount of rings. Okay, in the conversation, y'all still haven't been to the Super Bowl since the 19. Okay, but when we go, we win. All right, like, yeah, yeah. I don't know we don't go and lose. Like, we go and we win. Well, I think the NFL rigged in that aspect, especially versus the Chiefs. 49ers was beating them the whole game, and they just happened to have a fourth quarter comeback within three seconds. Because they don't No. Cowboys, we don't do nothing like that, man. Gee, y'all don't make, y'all barely make the playoffs. When we go, okay, all right. Back what we were saying. Yeah, I'm about to say. Yeah, we were talking about high scene. We were talking about the young thug and that gunner. We were talking about that young thug and that gunner. I mean, what y'all sure think about that case that's going on right oh, now? Oh, Lord. Oh. They've been tortured. Them Free money. I mean, Free. see, I don't, I don't Free, know right. too, too much extensive information about the subject. Right. But, man. Free one, honestly. <laughs> free, free my boy. You know what I mean? Free, see, free all white sim. See, see, I'm I'm with you on that stance because I don't know enough to no. make to make like a an educated comment yes. on it. What was you saying though about the trial date though? You said, yeah. Oh yeah, apparently, apparently, Gunna isn't gonna you know go to trial until January. He's gonna be in the pen for a minute. <laughs> Dang, that's a long. To be but he do got the money for us. I hope they give him like a mic or something. Like that. <laughs> get a, give, give him a producer. Get some good jam music. Get some good jam music. Get some good jam music. Get a good album. Wait, who, who, who has put out an actual good song from 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 jail? Yeah, I could play a song. right Why to be Melly? Who? A few of his songs. I got a song right now. Really? I play. A, 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 a lot of God. songs. A lot of songs are recorded on the phone. Rod Wave got a nice couple songs. Nice songs out of. Was it, was he, was he? It's called yeah, Honest to God, I'll play it right now. Oh, there's, there's a lot of people who wrote their songs in jail and then produced them when they got back up. We don't want copyright, but... Uh, it's hard. Um, we recorded on the phone. Oh. You know, you know a crazy story? Okay, so I went to the XXX Tentacion. Um, I hope I said his name right. I think it's Tentacion. Tent, tent, yeah. yeah tent, I went tent. to the X. Who? <laughs> so the X, so for the documentary <laughs> on Hulu, mm-hmm. um, was having a screener for it, and I went, and I, I seen it. And you know the crazy thing is when his song Look At Me came out that really blew him up, he was in prison the whole time, did not know he was famous, yeah. got out, it had millions of views and, and streams, like, and he did not know that. Yeah, he, so he was a celebrity while he was locked up. And that's how like his sto- like the mugshot stuff that came out, um he had went to jail for like domestic domestic violence on yeah, yeah, yeah. his ex girlfriend and stuff like that and th- that's the mugshot that had came out and so, yeah, he went viral and he didn't even know. Like he didn't know his mugshot was viral, he didn't know the song went like did that good, and you watched it. What you think? You think he uh, he beat up his his girlfriend at the time or not? What you think? Um, it's really it's one of those like can't really say because yeah. it's like it's it's really Either it's or, it's, like, it's, it's two sides to every story and then yeah. there's the truth. Yeah. So it's like we never yeah, you can't really answer that. I didn't I didn't know he went he went. So. Yeah, no, this was back in like when he got. This was like I'm gonna say 2017, 2017, 2016, 2016, right? something like that. Cause I was just I was in sixth grade when it happened. I remember that, and I was like when the song came out and everybody was everybody was like, I mean we was on the school bus and the, the bus driver used to get mad at us because everybody had like the, like the song playing at one time. What was that song? Look at me. Like, hey, what was that song? Like Young Brats or something like that. I actually, I actually like that song. Yeah, like that song that. hard. That song yeah. hard. But it's crazy though, though, like the amount of fame and like. You know how much money he made, how successful he was yeah. after because he passed away 2019. He mm. blew up 2017, he passed away 2019. That's crazy. So, how much success he had within those Man. two years? Yeah. Well, he did pass away 2019 in like what June? Was it June 18 or my trip in June 16? I don't know the exact date, but yeah. I, know. I, 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 I remember I was sad, I cried that day. Mm-hmm. I don't remember that. 
I don't really cry over celebrities, but that was like really sad because yeah, it wasn't even like my favorite celebrity. But the fact that he had like impact on so many people's lives yeah. just through his music, just like the same with Juice World. Yeah, mm-hmm. they said that. Yeah. Was, uh, Who's your favorite artist? Like of all time? Yeah. Or like just right now? Both. Let me see this. Okay, right now for sure, it'd be J Cole. That's okay. for sure my favorite artist. Right my now. favorite. That's my that's my favorite rapper. Who you got? Uh, of all time. It's okay to say J. Cole if you want. I mean, but that's not my all time favorite, though. I mean, I, he's my favorite, right? Well, he's one of my all time favorites. If I gotta say, like, my favorite, who I, I really listen to a lot, it would have to be the man on my shirt. Well, the man where Tupac, I went to. Tupac. Yeah, okay, okay, okay. He gotta be one of my favorites, y'all. You know, I gotta support. That was, oh, it was at LA Live. I went to the the free, to, the uh, With Me When I'm Free. He had, like, this little exhibit over on LA Live in downtown LA. Oh, yeah. I, it might be still going right now. Oh, the museum? Oh, so it's the minute? Is it right? It, we said, what? It's like a museum, right? It's like, yeah. it, it's like a, a museum with a lot of like real life documents of Tupac and his yeah. songs, like movies, like just real life accounts of people who knew him, and like they got merchandise and stuff. It's smooth. Right. It's over. It's really at, like LA Live, right next to Crypto. It's oh, not yeah. far though. Who you got? You saying all the time? All the time? All the time? <laughs> you gonna say Pac? Nah, I like Pac though. You gonna say Cole? Huh? Uh, I really love J Cole, man. That's my favorite rapper. That's my favorite rapper. He's been, and he's been at it for years. Yeah. He's been at it for years. I, I, I know y'all the hosts, but I got a question. Do y'all think Drake is top three all time when it Drake comes to Drake is top three of all time, I'm saying. When it comes I'm to... A, I'm okay. saying it. I, I, was, I, I, he was about to ask my favorite rapper. I was going to say Drake. I can agree with you on that, yes. <sighs> top three all time, I think so. Drake, I think Drake changed music. Drake can, can do anything. Drake is my favorite artist. J. Cole is my favorite rapper. Mm. I, say, I say that all the time. Yeah, yeah. Mm. I, I, I say that all the time. Yeah, so Cole when I say Drake, Drake is top three of rap... I would say no. Would I say he's the top three artists to exist? I would say yeah. But yeah, because Drake is like, his music isn't just like rap. It's just... He's very versatile. So, it's so, it's style. so I, I can agree with that, J. Cole. Because yeah. I think there's a lot of rappers that can rap better than J. Cole. But as an artist and what he does, his work ethic... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you say a lot of artists who can rap better than Drake? A lot of rappers that can rap better. Oh, I said J. Cole? You said J. Cole. Drake. I was stop thinking Because that was... Yeah. That's not true. I was, oh. I, was, I was going on. Nah, I was nah, man. I was going on. 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 There's a lot of rappers that can rap better than Drake. What are you talking about? I'm not saying something. There's a lot of rappers that can rap better than Drake, though. For sure. But. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, hey, I mean, mm-hmm. no, okay, no, like Drake like, can rap though. Pure, pure like, rap, yeah. pure rap, like because Drake isn't just rap. Like that's like his genre. Genre is rap, but it's like not what people think. When you, like when you think of rap, I'm thinking of like a J Cole. I'm thinking of, like a. He's just versatile. I think that's yeah, what you're I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go Biggie. I'm gonna say Biggie. Biggie, like Biggie. Biggie. I'm just I'm West Coast, so West Coast. I'm gonna take my. But, what's what's but crazy because no, 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 it, no, it doesn't matter. He, he made he made the majority Liddy. One of his songs was California. So, no, so that's, 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 that's because coast. he liked California. Yeah, yeah, okay, 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 okay. okay. It, 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 does, it doesn't matter. He moved to the West Coast and made a whole, uh, the majority of his music over here. But he's but from the East Coast. He's but he's from New York. He wore Tim's. He so, wore Tim's. So, okay. all right, so if I move to New York and I claim East Coast, it, does that automatically make me uh, East Coast? No. Well, East Coast. If, if you make music about, in like, that's your lifestyle, you live the majority of your life. Out there, then yeah, he didn't live the majority of his life in what's it called? He grew up in the, in the he, he Okay, I'm not gonna, I, I'm also not gonna sit here and act like he was. I know his whole story. I don't know when he moved over here. I, I, don't, I know, know a lot. I've, I've extensively researched Tupac. Yeah. I mean, okay. so he's he, 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 he moved, he was young. He from East Coast. To, to what's called to um, how old was he when he moved over here? I think he was maybe beginning of middle school, I think, or was it fifth or sixth grade? I'm not sure. That's but but think about think about the age he was when he died 26. Okay, come 20, he was 26, right? He was 25. But um, Dang, he was twenty five. He was twenty five. Uh, yeah, it was was it December? I'm, I'm yeah, was it December or was it? You know the. the yeah, I I've researched a lot about Tupac. Yeah, okay. But um, yeah. Tupac. Yeah. No, Tupac is. I mean, it's really it comes down to opinion. Who I mean, was the it, first it, lyric he rap? You researched a lot about Tupac. <laughs> <laughs> the first lyric he ever wrote. Street smart, street uh, wise. Well, <laughs> <laughs> Speaks much. Hey, this three. I'm all Muslim. I'll be on the corner hustling bean pot. Amen. I used to be the young bull rocking the felines. Now the chain sun so bright I can see God. Amen. That was a freestyle. Yeah, but so, nah, so, let me so, tell you. So, so, Earlier we was talking about people that wrote uh, music while they was like while they were in jail. Yeah. Tupac wrote, I think, almost a whole album while he was in jail. Mm-hmm. And, and came out and released it. Mm-hmm. Ain't nothing but Did he go so for a domestic violence charge too? Or it, or it was a rape? No, it wasn't. Okay, so it was. No, I, no, no, no. I'm, 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 I'm
no, 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 okay, no, 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 he, but he was innocent though. He listen, was, listen, listen. It, it, it was it was a valid. He got set up. He got set up. Yeah, no, no, it, it, it wasn't set up. No, 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 it wasn't set up. So what happened, what happened was this? It was it wasn't rape, it. but it it was accomplice to rape. So like oh. basically what it was was he was in the hotel room. He was sleeping on a couch, and his homies had a his homies had a girl come in, and they did whatever they did while he was asleep. But he didn't know anything about this. He was dead asleep. Yeah, this is in a movie. And, I and remember, man, and even the girl was Tupac like, was up. He, even <laughs> even the girl was like, Tupac didn't do nothing to the police, and he still got in what's called. Still got locked up for it. That's crazy. Yeah. That is. Maybe how you just long? wake up and just. That's, that's like, weird. Like you wake up and you in cuffs. Like how would you feel like just waking up and having all that happen? And it's like things happen so fast. Yeah. Um, and one thing I want to mention that we didn't mention earlier was just like it's so many shootings and stuff going on. I know. Yeah. First of all, our our pizza. You know, everyone who, who all the lost their lives or in the yeah. hospital. Sure. Um, lost family and friends because it's so it's so much going on and I I was just this was just was just being talked about and I was saying like even though there's it's been so many years and a lot has changed it's still a lot that needs to be worked on absolutely for yeah. sure I mean it kind of sucks because especially with the case of the elementary school shooting yeah that's like crazy. how you got like nine and ten year olds going to school not even thinking like thinking about like, just like trying to play with their friends play basketball handball. Like anything you think about, and then a few hours later, yeah. their parents get a call saying like their baby's not here yeah, no more. Yeah, yeah. That's and that's, true. I mean, I'm not a parent, so I don't know what it's like to have a kid, but I do know what it's like to have nieces and nephews. Yeah. And I know if I got that call, even about them, I like, I'd be completely heartbroken. And then also, yeah. you know, you being in a film where exactly, oh, uh, you know, uh, we, we played an Emmett Till uh, film just yeah. just recently. Yeah, just seeing like, I guess the. Just reading about it and, and you know now seeing everything that's going on now, it's like stuff like that is traumatizing. It really is. Like it makes. I told my mom because she had sent me to uh to go to the store like I'm gonna say two weeks ago, mm-hmm. and I wasn't like really scared, scared. But it's just like it makes you have to be so much more like careful and observant about every single place you go to. Like I'm Everywhere. looking at I'm looking at everybody I walk in the door. Yeah. I'm looking at like places if I had to like go out like a place I could go out, and it's just like. It's just kind of sad. Mm-hmm. And, like, like I said, I got nieces and nephews. And, like, my, well, I don't got nieces, actually. I got nephews. And they're three years old and, like, six months old. And they're growing up in a complete different time that I grew up in. When, I, when we was growing up, like, we was younger, we didn't have to worry about no COVID masks, yeah. no really? nothing, no yeah. school shootings. We were just yeah. having fun. Even, like, back when my mom was, like, growing up, they didn't have to worry about anything that even we had to worry about. Mm-hmm. They yeah. were just free, you know. It wasn't it's as crazy. many. It just was a lot of things that's. As time changes, and you know, we are taking like steps forward to mm-hmm. like in the right direction. Yeah. But in a lot of ways, we're taking a lot of steps backwards, yeah. and lot, it kind of just of it kind of sucks. But we just gotta push through, I guess. Yeah. Be resilient. I, I, I just wanted to mention that these shootings and everything. I feel like mental health is very important. You know, mm-hmm. with these people that are taking lives. You know, how important is mental health with you? You know, being an actor. I mean, I think mental health is important. Yeah. In any like facet or aspect of life. I think even if, like, for me, being an actor is very important because I got to kind of keep myself grounded, like we said a little bit earlier, but also, like, putting myself into these characters, um, especially characters like Willa Parker Jr., like, where you have to kind of experience and put yourself in the, the headspace of a lot of trauma and a lot of bad blood. I think you got to, like, really take the time to be able to take yourself out of that character mm-hmm. so it doesn't affect, like, your personal life. Because I remember when I was doing um, The Good Lord Bird, after I finished those six months, like it was a, like really, really hard for me to let go of that character mm-hmm. because I was in it for so long. And it was just like, even to this day, I have some like little slip ups with my accent, even though it was almost three years ago. <laughs> like I still sound like I'm back in 1860 with my accent. But I mean, <laughs> but, but I mean, for the most part, I guess pretty easy. I do a lot of, I read a lot. I try to read every single day just to gain some more vocabulary knowledge and just kind of relax myself. Meditation is very good. Like when you wake up to meditate, I don't do it as much as I should be. I never tried it. It's really good. I feel like it just starts your day off really well. Like Mm -hmm. you just kind of just chill and like you feel at one with yourself and it's like good energy and just good vibes all the way around. How exactly like do you meditate? Like what do you I mean, it's not really like a, like a, even like a hand motion. I said, yeah, like not even like a hand (laughs) placement or anything like that. I just think it's more so like taking deep breaths and just, you could do it laying down, standing up. Like what you see a lot of people doing like this. You can do that, but it's just really just being with yourself Mm -hmm. and kind of 
just clearing your mind and getting ready for the day. And it's, mm-hmm. I feel like it makes my day more peaceful personally. Mm-hmm. What, about you, what you think about meditation? I mean, I've done it before. Like, I, had, I definitely had a class where we had to do it. Mm-hmm. I'll say it's definitely beneficial in the sense that it, it helps you center yourself, helps you, like, if you do it in the beginning of the day, that's great because that means you are, like, preparing yourself for everything that's going to happen or everything that may happen. And you just kind of get a chance to be still, like, be calm for a mm-hmm. second. And that's, I think that's important because with everything that's happening, like, in the, in the world, in life in general, we all need a moment to just, like, be still for a second. Okay. So make sure you, first of all, you're, if you're watching this, just make sure you take that time to just, for yourself, be calm, relax, and just, like, just kick back for a second. You know, just take a couple deep breaths because life is crazy. Yeah, we is. all need a second sometimes to ourselves. Yeah, also, also just one more thing that nah, I didn't say that I usually do. I mean, you don't have to do this. I'm just like a religious person. I'm a Christian. So I think prayer is like probably one of the most peaceful things I could do personally. Like yeah. just if I'm ever going through something, I don't even have to be going through something. Just to start off the day, like, you know, talking to God, just kind of expressing yourself. And I feel like my biggest advice for like people that don't really pray often is like just talk to them how you talk to your friends. Just like be yourself, I mean, in a way. Respectful, obviously, but like. Yeah. Be yourself. <laughs> be, be yourself. Not too much like you talk to your friend. <laughs> that's it. Yeah. You know, not too much. Like, not too, too much. For real. For just real, be real. yourself. And I feel like, I mean, God always got a way. So just yeah. basically for that. Yeah. And, and, I, and my last thing for you, I just wanted to ask you, what's next? Like with acting and everything? With acting, with life. What are like, you, you planning on doing? What's next? next? Uh, to see you. I got a project coming up. I'm, buying a, I'm gonna film soon. Okay. Can't say okay. too much about it. Right. But I mean, I'll let y'all know. Of course, as soon as it gets, you know, released as a deadline report. So, yeah, just, just work, man, grind. Just got to keep doing that. And summer. You know. Okay. Fine. 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 Turn up. <laughs> and one last thing, you know, you've been dropping gems the whole, the whole episode, <laughs> but is there anything, you know, you want to tell these people out here, you know, that want to be actors and, and anything? Is there any inspiration, you know, you could give them? Yeah, I mean, just if it's like what you really want to do, whether it's acting, sports, be a lawyer, doctor, whatever you want to be, you can't do it. Just got to, you know, never let anybody discourage you. Like, even if you don't have a support system at home that encourages you to do that, just you got to be your own support system. And just work hard, be dedicated, and that will take you a long way in life, for sure. And stay humble. Yes. Be humble. Yeah. Sit down. Just be humble. <laughs> No, but on a serious note, that actually kind of concludes this episode of Word on the Street. Yes. Thank you so much, Joshua, for coming and sitting and chatting and chilling no with problem, us today. For the, second time, for the second time. For the yeah. second time. You know, the y'all first, first, no, first one kind of got lost. Thank y'all for having me, though, man. No, no, real. Nice. No, nice. Great episode. Great episode. Absolutely. That being said, make sure you like, comment, share, subscribe. Follow Post our socials too. as well. Yep, turn on that. Turn on that. Click that bell. You know what I'm saying? Make sure you follow. Joshua, on everything, you know what I'm saying? Uh, what, what do you want to advertise your Instagram? Yeah. Uh, TikTok? I mean, not, <laughs> not nah, just follow me on Instagram, official Joshua Caleb Johnson. I'm going to change that name soon, but uh, anyways, and we're gonna yeah, put just follow me on there. It's the official onion. <laughs> and we're going to put that with the, the when you was 10, we're going to put that oh, little yeah. clip. Oh, so y'all can really see it. So y'all can see it. Y'all want to see where it all started, oh, so you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Who rider? The origin. Who rider? That's, that's Ethan Hawke. That's a little something about you. Now, y'all. Hoorah. Peace. Thanks for watching.